Hi, my name is Sean Michaels with American Micro Semiconductor. And today's discussion is going to be about silicon carbide rectifiers, a new cutting edge technology that's going to be utilized in thermal management. In today's world, there have been recently two advances in the semiconductor field. One is reduction and miniaturization of chips. The second is thermal management. Thermal management in the form of silicon carbide offers enormous potential. Potential in the actual chip that's being made, as well as the reduction in components and the materials needed to process or assemble various electronic subassemblies or miniaturization issues. What we'd like to do is talk about today are some of the new features and origins of silicon carbide rectifiers. So what is silicon carbide? What is the brief history of silicon carbide? And what is a silicon carbide band gap? And how does that affect your design in the future? And how does silicon carbide compare to other rectifiers that are using standard silicon in their elements? And in regards to scope testing, what does silicon carbide and what can it show us? Well, silicon carbide is something that everybody should be interested in. For one thing, you can get shocky performances at higher voltages, say 1200 volts or above, with silicon carbide. But you can also get switching speed with silicon carbide that you can't get with silicon on its own. Up till now, due to rectifier performance compromise, you can only get shocky performance at the expense of limited reverse breakdown voltage, typically about 100 volts. Now you can get shocky and silicon carbide for superior rectifier performance. And that's not all silicon carbide rectifiers can offer. They can offer much more in the way of temperature stabilization. But more on that in a minute. Let's look at its silicon carbide and its past. Silicon carbide, the chemical symbol, capital S, small i, C, has been around for over 100 years and is well known as carborundum, which is used as an abrasive. In powder form, it's a hard ceramic. You may have seen it on sandpaper or other types of abrasive. Even some industrial cleaning solutions contained silicon carbide or carbide in itself, carborundum. And it was also used in brake pads, body armor, etc. But our interest here is really in the energy band gap. Many of silicon carbide's advantages derive from its high energy wide band gap. Now let's talk a little bit about the physics of silicon carbide and one of its most interesting characteristics that makes it important in electronic circuits. And that is its energy band gap. Recall from your physics that band gap is one way to explain reverse breakdown voltage in semiconductor junctions. The energy required to free an electron from its valence band or bond to the conduction bond is measured by EV. That is the charge of an electron multiplied by the voltage. This is the energy required to excite an electron from its valence band state to its conduction state. The energy gap for many semiconductors is around 1.0, but for silicon carbide, it's 3.3 EV. Another way of looking at silicon carbide wide band gap is that silicon carbide is more like an insulator than silicon or germanium. And for a given voltage, silicon carbide has a lower forward voltage as well as a lower leakage current than either silicon or germanium. This can be seen in the graphs below. American Micro Semiconductor is introducing the AMS-1512 silicon carbide Schottky rectifier. It is a 15 amp, 1200 volt rectifier in a TO202 package. Contact American Micro Semiconductor at 973-377-9566 should you have any questions or be interested in the specifications. Or if you're interested in any samples, please contact our sales department directly.